Hey there guys, this is Reckles with One to Buy Gold, and I'm here today to talk to you about my favorite hero in Heroes of the Storm, Murky. Um, I honestly think he is the strongest hero in the game right now, because if Blizzard were to design a tank that could clear two lanes faster than two full heroes could push back, and had Nova's Precision Strike on a 10 second cooldown, that would be a little overpowered. But that hero is in the game, and that hero's name is Murky. So, I don't know about you guys, but I don't really like guides made by people who only have three or four games played on the character, or are only level seven, something like that. Um, I'm level 20 on Murky, I have about 500 games played on him, and I recently hit rank 1 in Hero League using Murky exclusively with about a 70% win rate. I'm sure some, some of my teammates would have preferred that I pick Kael'thas every once in a while, but that's not the point. Uh, Murky is viable in any team comp. So I'm sure some of you guys are just here for a talent breakdown. So let's get into that real quick. Too long, didn't read. Uh, level 1, we're going to take Block. Level 4, we're going to take Living the Dream. Level 7, we're going to take Bigger Pufferfish. Our ultimate is going to be Octograb. And then at 13, we're going to take Bubble Cooldown Reduction. At level 16, we're going to take the Heal on our Bubble. And then at level 20, our Storm Talent, we're going to take Octograb Actually Does Damage. And a Shark, too. There's nothing better than beating people with a fish and killing them. So, there are three stages that you play Murky in during the normal game. The level 1 to level 10, and then level 10 to when you kill a keep, and then from when you kill a keep to when you win the game. But first, I want to talk a little bit about why I think he's actually a tank, because when I said that, I'm sure some of you rolled your eyes. If Blizzard were to design a new hero, a new tank in the future, we can look at Muradin and Tyrael and Stitches and Johanna, some of the core tanks right now, and see what they have in common. It would have to have great mitigation, uh, great self-healing, and some kind of really good, really unique initiation for team fights. Well, let's look at Murky. He has full invulnerability on a 7 second cooldown, so mitigation is covered. Now, he would also have to have great self-healing, and not only do regen globes heal him for half of his health, and the healing fountain heal him for his entire health, but he can talent into a full self-heal with his bubble. But more importantly, he has the highest static health regen in the game. Five times any other character. This is essentially the same amount of self-healing that Muradin has when Muradin is, uh, when Muradin's second wind kicks in. Uh, except Murky is always healing even when he's in combat. So when you're battling against a Murky, think that you're battling against a Muradin who's self-healing. And for initiation, of course, we have the Octograb, which is a ranged initiation and a three-second stun, which is only really matched by ETC and arguably the Butcher, but the Butcher's chain post, he, you can actually still kill the Butcher during that. Um, so I don't really count that. So let's get into how to play Murky. Level 1 to level 10, it's all about getting to 10 as fast as you can. You're essentially going to split this up into two sections. Before the first objective spawns, we're just going to be sitting in our lane, and I highly recommend you kick anyone else out of your lane. The reason for this is you're just murky. I'm putting air quotes around that. People think they can kill you, but actually you're the strongest early game laner in the game. Your goal is to pufferfish and slime every minion wave. If you do this, you, their minions will die before your minions. You will also be able to pick up a regen globe that heals you up to full health. Because you're such an easy target, they will chase you. Whether or not they take any shots from your towers is besides the point because they will end up tanking your minions and taking a little bit of damage. If you pick up regen globes and avoid taking damage, you will stay at close to full health and your minions will outlast their minions, which means they will end up tanking some of your minion wave. After a couple waves of this, they'll be at half health, and they'll need to drink from their fountain. Another wave of this, and they'll be too low, and they'll need to go back to their base or have someone else rotate from another lane, something like that. Either way, your team either gets another kill in another lane, or they lose XP in their lane because one of their minion waves ran into their tower 
and died without anyone there to soak the XP. So you get about a third of a level advantage just from that. Once the first objective spawns, what you want to do is you want to start your dual lane setup. If you start off on bottom, you want to throw a puffer fish down, slime the minion wave, then rotate up to the middle lane. Throw a puffer fish down, slime the minion wave, rotate back down bottom, rinse repeat, and pretty soon, because everyone's at the objective, they're missing out on all these minions running into their towers. You're getting the XP, and within one or two objectives, you have a two level advantage on them. <laughs> Assuming no one on your team feeds, and um, worst case, if they do, you're even on XP and you're about to take their towers down. Now, from level 10 on, you have Octograb. And you want to keep your split laning going. You want to keep pushing two lanes at once because with full stacks of Living the Dream, it only takes one pufferfish to blow up an entire minion wave. But you have Octograb, so whenever Octograb is off cooldown, if there's a team fight, go on into the team fight and be a tank. When Octograb is on cooldown, if you're still in the fight and Octograb is on cooldown, you can do damage with your Pufferfish from range, go back to where Vala and Kael'thas are and just throw Pufferfish out. A great use for the Pufferfish is like Precision Strike, you can use it for zoning, um, to where if you have a damaged member of your team, throw it between the enemy team and the damaged member and it keeps them out because they don't want to take a thousand damage. Of course, sometimes this doesn't work, and people don't get the memo, and they still go in and turn around. That's on them if they decide to die, but hey, you did your part, you zoned for them. Back to laning, though. Generally, most people don't like heroes that don't participate in fights. Heroes like uh, Zagara's that just push one lane, or Gazlo's that just go around getting merc camps. But with Murky, you're actually pushing two lanes. You're soaking two lanes at the same time. You're essentially getting the same XP as Lost Vikings, but you're doing a ton more damage and you can tank during team fights. Once the game goes on a little ways and you get to where you can kill a keep, do everything you can to kill a keep because then you can really start to pressure them. Murky essentially doesn't die. He's a specialist, but he specializes in annoying people, especially with this build. The heal is amazing, and I take the block at level 1 because most characters in the game only take block at level 1 because uh, there's a Nova, or there's a Sergeant Hammer, or there's a Butcher, someone who does a ton of damage and can just completely wreck you. But with Murky, every auto attack takes away a quarter to a half of his health. And there are 5 to 10 times during every game that I get down to 10, 20, 50, 100 HP where blocks saved my life. This allows you to keep putting pressure on lanes and keep annoying them. Now, once the keep is down, this is the stage 3 of the murky gameplay. You can use this insane survivability, this never quite dying and always being able to go invulnerable and heal up to full to just keep pushing lanes. Because you're pushing two lanes at once faster than they can push back, this requires the enemy team to bring two people out of any team fight. So not only are you a level or two levels or four levels ahead of them because you've been soaking the entire time, but now your team is fighting a 4v3 at the objective. And if those two people that they pull out still can't heal you, they might bring a third in or a fourth in or a fifth. And at that point, you are acting as a distraction. You are pure, you're not necessarily trying to kill the core. If you do, that's great. But you're just distracting so your team can take the objectives which are the goal of this game so if there's a boss that needs to be taken or a shrine or a temple or a golem anything that needs to be taken if you're pushing in on their core and you're clearing minion wave after minion wave and you're pushing their keep and their core at the same time they have to respond and you don't die and even when they kill you you come right back now a few of the uh specifics about how to play murky um to take minion camps it's really not that hard the siege minions you can take easily at level 13 with the decreased uh bubble cooldown throw down a pufferfish slime them auto attack one 
slime him again, and as soon as you slime the second time, go ahead and bubble, and uh, then just use all your abilities. The bruisers are a little bit trickier. With this build, they require level 16. Uh, you throw down a pufferfish, slime him, and make sure you're attacking the mage, the caster minion. He has less health. As soon as you kill him, go ahead and bubble, and then just pick one guy, auto attack, slime on cooldown, throw down a pufferfish, and as soon as you can, bubble again, and they should be dead after that. Now, one thing that people worry a little too much about is losing their egg, dying with their egg. If you die and your egg's not up, it's not a big deal. But, uh, generally, if someone kills your egg, someone on the enemy team is gonna come looking for you. So, if you're in a five-man group or you're on voice comms, let them know to converge on you whenever your egg dies because there's going to be one or two really easy kills on the enemy team who are going to be coming to try to kill you. Whether you die or not isn't important, but you can kill off an Uther or a Vala or a Butcher who's just out for blood, <laughs> and that easy kill can turn the tides of a game. Also, with the egg, think of it like creep. Early game, you want to use it for safety, for escape, things like that, but late game, you want to use it for vision. You can put it in the boss's room on Tomb of the Spider Queen to know if they're going to go take the boss. You can put it in the smoke at the gym turn-in to see if they're going to go turn in gems. It gives vision, and vision is super important to this game. However, if you don't want your egg to be found, a great place to put it is actually in a merc camp that's just been taken. That gives you three and a half minutes of a spot where no one has any reason to go there. And if they do, when the camp is already up, you have vision and you know that they're going to take that camp. Alright, and last thing I wanted to talk about was laning against specific heroes that might be problem heroes for some people. I've gotten questions on Sylvanas and Tychus and Vala, how to deal with those people. Essentially, your goal is to make them choose. When you watch most people play, they stand in their minions for protection for some reason, but if you're laning against Jaina, there's nothing she would love more than to land a blizzard on top of the minion wave and you. You know, Vala would love nothing more than to hit you and the minion wave with multi-shot. So don't stand near the minions or with the minions between you and her. Stand at a 90 degree angle. Stand north of her or south of her. And there, she has to pick. She either shoots her abilities at you or at your minion wave. And if she does that, and you can bubble off any AoE ability. For most single target abilities, you can go hide in your minion wave, like uh, Hungering Arrow or Ice Lance, you can just go hide in your minion wave and they won't hit you. But the same thing applies that we were talking about with laning, where during all of this, you can just throw a pufferfish down and slime the minions and her minions are dead faster than yours. Now, if they do keep killing your pufferfish, one thing that you can do is stand on top of it immediately after you throw it. Your block will keep you from dying and you can bubble off any abilities, but if you're standing right on top of your pufferfish, it's just like the old healing wards. They can't target it. They can only target you, so your pufferfish is guaranteed to do damage and then you just hightail it out of there while they start tanking your minion wave. But I think that's enough for today's guide. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitter if you want. It's at Ryan A. Eccles. I'll put a link in the description. I'll put any more information I think of in the description. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.